Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we're going to continue on with our survival series, and we'll be adding a day-night cycle to our game. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll open up the Blueprints folder, and we're going to open up the Structs folder, and we're going to create a new struct. So we'll right-click, go to Blueprints, Structure, and we'll call this F Time. And with this structure, we'll open it up, add two new variables, right, and we'll change them to integers. And what these are going to represent is uh, this structure is going to help us keep track of the time uh, in our game. Okay, So we'll go ahead and call this first one days, the second one we'll call hours, and the last one here we'll call minutes. Okay, So we'll save that and we can close it now. Okay, Next we'll go back um, to our blueprints and we're going to open up lists now and we're going to create a new enumerator. So we'll right click, go to blueprints enumeration, call this E clock type. Open it up. We'll create two new ones. This first one here we'll call 12 hour. Oops, 12 hour. Second one we'll call 24 hour. And basically what this enumerator or enumeration is, is it will help us determine uh, how to format our uh, clock on our HUD. Okay, so behind the scenes, all the calculations that we'll do will be based on a 24-hour, uh, you know, uh, numbers. But whether or how we format them will depend upon this enum. Okay, so we'll close that. Go back to blueprints. Now we can right-click and we're going to create a new folder called Weather. Going to open it up, and then we're going to right-click, create a blueprint class of type Actor. And we'll call this BP underscore Weather Manager. All right, so basically this class, what it's going to be is it's going to be like this kind of uh, master class of sorts that will keep track of our day and night. It'll keep track of our, or it'll update our world temperature. Uh, and it will, you know, also you could add in some extra functionality for uh, kind of setting up different, you know, weather systems. So maybe sunny days, rainy days, snowy days, etc. So I would recommend, you know, if you do that to kind of keep it in this class because you already have all the kind of variables that you'll need inside of this class. So let's go ahead and open it up. And what we're going to do right away is add a new component. Uh, we'll add a billboard. Okay. And this will just be kind of for visually representing the weather manager when it's in the game. Or not in the game, but, you know, in the editor. We'll take our billboard and replace the root with it. And you can leave it. Uh, as this sprite if you want, but I'm going to change it to a target actor. So if you click this, you go to view options and you toggle show engine content. Then if you search for target, you'll see the target icon. So we'll choose that. And there it is. Okay, so next let's go to the event graph. And I'm going to get rid of everything here for now. Okay. And we're going to just add a whole bunch of variables here. So let's, let's get started. So we'll add a new variable. We'll call this start time, and we'll change this to F time. Okay, we'll make it editable uh, because this, uh, what this is going to represent is it's going to represent the time that we want to start our game at. Okay, so whether that be you know six o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock at night, you know that'll be this will be how we start it. Okay, next we'll take this variable uh, or we'll add another variable that we'll call current time, and this will be for keeping track of the current time. And that should be not editable. So we'll add another one that we'll call minutes per day. We'll change that to a float and make it editable. And this will be, you know, how many minutes we want each in-game day to last. Okay, we'll add another one here that we'll call seconds per day. Oops, let me just capitalize that really quick, just for consistency. And of course, I added an O. Fantastic. All right, and we'll leave that one. Uh, not edited or not edited okay or editable so just to make sure that we don't forget this later on uh, we're going to go to the construction script really quick and we're going to drag out seconds per day and we'll set it okay and we're going to set it uh, based on the minutes per day times 60 so we'll take our minutes per day and get it multiply float by float and we'll multiply it by 60. So this is just going to you know take how many minutes we have each day and then multiply it by 60 seconds you know per minute to get us how many seconds per day. Okay, um, and the reason that we're doing that is because it's easier for us, you know, to understand uh, or you know to, you know, determine how long we want things to be in minutes, you know, rather than trying to convert, 
you know, minutes into seconds sometimes. So that'll just handle it for us because uh, all of our calculations will be based on seconds per day. So next we'll add another one that we'll call elapsed time and this will be a float still. And this will represent, you know, how much time has passed uh, since the start of each day. Okay, we'll add another one here that we're gonna call clock type. We're gonna change this to our E clock type and this will be editable as well. Um, and we'll use this later on for passing through to like our UI uh, for formatting. Okay, so next we'll create another one that we'll call, we're gonna call this sun up time. Change that to an integer, make it editable. And this will be the time that we want our sun to start rising. Okay, then we'll call this next one sun down time, make it editable as well. And that will just be, you know, the time that we want the sun to start going down. Okay, so next what we'll do uh, so we'll categorize these really quick. So we'll take our start time, change its category here to time, and go ahead and do that. Uh, move these all into the time category uh, for the rest of them. All right, so yours should look like this now. So we've got a couple more variables to add, so we'll add them now. We're gonna add one here that we're gonna call uh, sun, and we'll change this to type directional light reference. Make it editable as well. And this is gonna be a reference to you know any kind of uh, this will be a reference to a light source like this directional light uh, in our levels, okay? So we'll compile and save that. Uh, then we'll go ahead and add another one that we'll call sky. And we're going to change this type to BP underscore uh, sky sphere reference. Make that editable as well. And that will be a reference to, you know, a sky sphere like this, okay? Then we'll add another one here that we'll call is night question mark. Oops, and this will be a boolean that will help us determine if it's nighttime. Uh, because if it's nighttime, then we're gonna, uh, you know, we might want to do some other stuff with that. So then we'll create another one that we'll call sun intensity. This should be a float, and this will be set based on the intensity of our sun when the game begins. Okay, and then the very last one that we're gonna add here is a curve that we'll call. Um, Let's just call it day um, day curve. How about okay? And we'll change this to a type curve float. And what we're going to do with this variable is we're essentially going to use it to drive our temperature later on uh, to kind of coordinate with the time of day. Um, so yeah, really that's that's kind of the main purpose. But you can use it for other stuff too. So anyways, we'll we'll leave that for now. Um, but for the sun through sun intensity, let's go ahead and move these um, to our day-night cycle. Or actually, we can do that with day curve too. So put put all these into a new category called day-night cycle. Okay. All right. So we have all these done. Let's go ahead and give them some default variable or values. So we'll take our starting time. And I'm gonna say let's start us at eight o'clock in the morning or something. Okay. Um, next, let's do minutes per day. I'm just going to do one for right now, uh, so that it's you know relatively quick, so we can really see uh, the system working. Uh, leave these next two alone. Clock type, I'm going to leave it on 24-hour formatting. For sun up time, I'm going to say maybe six o'clock is when the sun will come up. Sun down time, I'll say maybe uh, eight o'clock in the after or at night. So that'd be 18 hours. I believe, would that be 18? No, it'd be 20 hours. Yeah, 20 hours, okay. And then um, for these, for the rest of these, just leave them all at their defaults. We're gonna set the sun and sky and day curve later. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start creating our functions. So first thing we're gonna do is right click and get our event begin play in here. And with it, we're gonna drag off and do a sequence. Okay, because we're going to perform a couple different things here. So we'll just add one more for now because we'll do three things. First thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, try to get our sun and sky uh, if they haven't been set yet. Okay, so we'll create a new function really quick that we'll call get sun and sky. So we'll open this, make, or make sure it's already open. And then first thing we'll do is we'll get our sun in here and we'll check if it's valid. So we'll say is valid and we want the question mark one. Okay, hook that up. Okay, so if it's not valid, then we want to get, oops, get all actors of class. Oops, not that one. 
get all actors of class. Okay, now for the class, we want to search for directional uh, light. And then from here, we'll say get, and we'll just get the first index in the array. So that will return the first directional light we find in the level. Okay, and then with that, we'll say set sun, hook it up like that, and there we go. Now, um, next what we need to do is take our sky and do the same thing. So we'll take sky and we'll say is valid question mark one. Okay, but now here, regardless of whether or not the sun is valid, we, we want to plug in both of these. Okay, so now if the sky isn't valid, we're going to say get all actors of class again. This time we'll choose BP underscore sky sphere. And then we'll get the first index in the array. And then we'll say set sky. So I gotta scroll down to the bottom here to find it. There it is. Plug it in. And there we go. So that will just set them for us if we don't already, you know, have them. So we'll drag this in, plug it into zero, and we're good to go. Next, what we need to do is we need to, um, we're gonna get our, or set our sunlight's intensity here. So we'll create a function for that. So we'll say set, um, set sun intensity. Okay, so we'll drag out sun intensity and say set, hook this up. Now for the intensity, we'll get our sun here. We'll drag out and we'll say get uh, intensity. Oh, actually we can't do that. First we need to get the light component, okay? And then from there we can get its intensity. And we'll use that value to plug it in. Okay, compile and save, there it is. And then we'll hook up that one. All right. So the last one that we'll do uh, for now is we'll add a function that we'll call set, uh, let's see, set elapsed time based on start time. Okay, so this, what this is gonna do is we're gonna set our elapsed time based on our starting time because if we, you know, if we start at like eight hours into the game, then that means some time has already elapsed or, you know, has already passed. So we need to set that, okay? Uh, so what we'll do then is we'll go ahead and take our start time and we'll get it. And we're gonna drag out, and break this into its, you know, different little components here. Okay, and now what we need to do is we need to convert these all to seconds because our lapse time is going to be based on, you know, how many seconds are in a day, okay? So we'll take days and we're gonna multiply this integer times integer, multiply it by how many seconds are in a day, which is uh, 86,400. Then we'll take our hours, integer times integer, and we'll do 3,600 because there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. And then for day or minutes, oops, not that one. We'll multiply integer times integer again, and we'll choose or enter 60. Okay, so each of these is just going to get us a value of how many seconds there are. So we'll say integer plus integer, click this little add pin so we have three, and hook these all up. Okay, great. So the last thing that we need to do is take this and multiply it by a float. And that float value that we're going to multiply by will be our seconds per day. And then we're going to divide this by how many seconds are actually in a day. Okay, so that our fractions are equal here. Um, so we're, or at least we're working with the same units. So we'll say a six thousand four hundred. Plug that in, and then we'll take that and say set elapsed time. Hook it up, and there we go. So what we might want to do actually is take this little chunk here and collapse this to a function uh, that we'll call get time as seconds. Okay, and then we'll just rename the input here to time, return value is fine, and we'll make it pure and const. Okay. And scoot everything over, compile and save, go to the event graph, and we'll add that in, uh, so right there. Okay, there we go. So that's all for this video. Uh, in the next one, we're going to finish this up, add in the rest of the functionality, and get it you know, all tested and working. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked the video, and I will see you in the next one.